Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me on this Holy Week as we continue to journey with Jesus. On this most important week for our faith, I want us to pray together. But before we do, I want us to hear perhaps the greatest text on prayer in all of Scripture. I'll be reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, beginning at verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us go. Here comes my betrayer. This, of course, is the prayer upon which all other prayers depend. The prayer in which Jesus submits his will to that of his Father. That he submits his very life to the will of God. And he takes upon himself a weight, a burden that none of us can fathom. For although some people will know something of the physical suffering and some of the, the other things that Jesus went through, it's only on a very small scale. We can't possibly fathom what it is to have the weight of the world, literally, the weight of the sins of the world, on our shoulders. And that's what Jesus is taking on here as he submits to his Father's will. It tells us that whatever else our prayers are, they're ultimately to bring us in alignment to the will of God, that we might pray as God wants us to pray. And certainly the prayer that Jesus taught us moves us in that direction as well. May your name be honored, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I also want to reflect very briefly on the failure of the disciples. They don't come out very well here in this story. Jesus asks not much of them, just stay awake. I'm, I am torn up inside. I'm greatly burdened. I need to know that you're with me. And they're not with him. They're asleep three times. And so Jesus is left to pray this prayer alone. And it's sad. I, I, of all the sadness that, of these events, this is one I think, I think the saddest points. And I'm, I'm haunted by the words of Jesus. Couldn't you stay awake with me even one hour? Have you ever prayed for a full hour? I remember the first time I tried to do it. I was uh, 17 years old, and it was uh, going to be New Year's, and uh, it was New Year's Eve, and I, I stayed up, and at 11 o'clock, uh, I wasn't, uh, I was with no one else, I was alone, and I said, all right, Lord, I want to spend an hour in prayer with you. I'd never attempted that before in my life, and let me tell you, that was a hard hour. It was tough for me to stay awake, to stay focused to stay uh, intent in prayer through that time. Now, Lord willing, in the intervening 45 years or so, I've learned a little bit more about how to pray and to pray more fervently and consistently. But it's not easily done. We have to be wholehearted. We have to be fully focused on what we're doing. And so may these words remain with us. First of all, that we might give thanks to Jesus for what he has done for us in this Holy Week and thank him for his willingness to surrender his will to that of his Father, for love of us. Let's understand that. And then again, the grace that he extends to his disciples. They fail him here as they're going to fail him again and again this night, but he does not give up on them. 
He does not disown them, even though they disown him. The love of God is greater and deeper than we know. So let's be in prayer for this season, for our church, and for whatever else the Lord may bring to mind in this time. Pray with me, please. Almighty God, we thank you. We are humbled before the example of Jesus, who gave himself to the, the hard work of prayer, the hard work of surrendering his will to yours. For he knew what it meant. He understood what was before him, and yet he was willing to do that, and we give you thanks. And we pray, Lord, that you will just help us to grow in all that it is to pray, to become more consistent. Teach us to pray more often. Teach us to pray longer. Teach us to, to persevere in prayer until we have the answer, until we come to that place where our prayers are in accordance with your will. We ask, God, that you will do that work in us and that you will do that work also in our church as we move forward on several fronts simultaneously where we need your grace and your help. We pray, God, for the search for a person to head up our youth ministries. So important, Lord, for our young people to have someone to come alongside of them in Jesus' name and to model what it is to be a follower of Christ at this critical point in their lives. And we ask, God, that you will continue to be with those who are looking and searching, that you'll guide this process in accordance with your conclusion that what you want done will get done here. And we pray that you will bring someone who will be able to take us on that path and especially, Lord, to guide our young adults as they seek uh, to learn what it is to be followers of Jesus. Lord, we want to pray also for those who are beginning uh, the work uh, in a few weeks of the vision frame process, uh, what, the what the future is, Lord, as they look forward to what you're calling our church to be. May great discernment be given them. May the Holy Spirit attend each one of those meetings and lead them so that what emerges from that will be indeed your will for this church. Not so much a, a blueprint, Lord, where we have it all written out because you never give us everything, but enough to know where you're calling us and to take the first steps in those directions. And we pray that all that they need will be given to them as well. Lord, we pray for uh, your continuing work in our midst, Lord. We thank you, God, that uh, we are able to continue not just with the ministries of worship, but the ministries of, of feeding people on Fridays and clothing them. And all that we are doing here, help us all to do it, Lord, from full hearts that are full of love for you and our neighbor. And help us to, to see as you see, and to love as you love, that we might do as you do. And we pray, God, that you will bless those who are ailing and recovering. For all those who are lonely and in places of difficulty, we pray that you will make your presence known. We pray, Lord, for two people who've been part of this church for decades. We pray for Bob Weida and for Janice Holland. We're so grateful that they're home, Lord. And we pray that you'll bless them, Lord, as they continue to try and build up strength and, and do physical therapy and the things that they need to do. And we ask that you will continue to add strength to them each day. Lord, we want to pray for another one who's been part of our church for many, many decades. We pray for Bob Franta, who's been part of this church since 1968. As, as he's had to leave his home, Lord, after his recent hospitalization and move into the Hillview residence, it's a big shift for him, Lord, and a difficult one. Comfort Bob, we pray. Be strength to him, we pray. And we pray that you will surround him with phone calls and cards from those who know him and pray that you will just minister to him in this time. And God, we thank you that you are the God who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. May Bob experience that reality in every way, we pray. And we pray that you will be with all those who continue to deal with illnesses, for those who are recovering from surgeries. We pray that you will be the God who works for healing and for good in each life. And Lord, we pray for those who are in tough spaces, who are just trying to figure out what's going on. And perhaps so many difficult things are happening at the same time they feel overwhelmed. Be the God who lifts their burdens. Be the God who gives them a firm place to stand and helps them to begin to move forward one day, one moment at a time. And we pray for their encouragement this day. And we pray, Lord, that you will be with all the things that are on our hearts and minds, Lord. 
Lord, you know those whom we love who, who are pressing in on us from within. And we ask, God, that we will lift them to you, that we will turn that, that anxiety we may have into energy for prayer and into trust, Lord. And we thank you, God, that you do hear our prayers and that you respond to them in the ways that honor you. And we pray that that will continue even in us, even now. We pray, Lord, in this special week that you'll be in our Monday Thursday service and our Easter service. And we pray that these will take us close to Jesus, that we may understand more of all that you have done for us in Christ and how greatly we are loved. And Lord, we are just astounded when we really think of what Christ did for us. We, we're overwhelmed. Will you be the God who lifts our eyes to Jesus? to encourage us, to strengthen us, to help us to step forward into lives that are more and more spirit-empowered, more and more like that of Jesus himself, that we may love others as we have been loved by you. And Lord, we pray that you will just continue to go before us, grateful for your companionship with us every day as we trust our church and ourselves and all whom we love into your care, and join together in the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for praying this week. Let's continue in prayer every day in this Holy Week. I hope many of you will be able to join us uh, Thursday night at 6 o'clock in Weta Hall for our Monday Thursday service and Sunday at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary for our Easter service. And may the love, the presence, the blessing of Jesus Christ be with each of you today and always.